Welcome to Virus. It's been a while since I did a base build, and today we're going to do a base build, and it's going to be a really awesome one. I love water. Zombies behave really interestingly in water. So as a result, we're going to do an underwater base. It's going to be underwater, underground base, and I found a location. This is Navis game. The same would work anywhere else. I put myself about 30... 25 30 blocks away from the shore the reason being is that i want to make sure that the zombies will spawn somewhere around here and then uh, basically make their way down we're gonna make this area let's see uh, probably gonna make it about one let's stop flying nope let's oh. <laughs> uh. right let's take Tick, take it, take it, tick. It's a little bit difficult to go down in the water, unfortunately. <laughs> Just like, bring me down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Let's do about twenty. Twenty sounds about right. So we're gonna do about twenty deep. Um. Let's say 20 deep and we're going to do it like that. I am using the level tool. I have made a, a video about how to do that one. Uh, how to actually get that one enabled. Uh, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll link it in the description. But it makes uh, some of this building much, much faster. And because we're going to have a 3x3 three three internally. So it means that we're going to have 3x3 three three internally. It means that we have to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Something like this. 3x3 three three internally, that sounds about correct. And then we're going to remove it all here in the level tool. Random decorate with nothing, because that's what I have in my hand. If you don't know how to use the level tool, I do urge you to go have a look at, at the video. I will try to link it in the description below, because it's really good when you're just testing things out. This obviously doesn't work when you're doing it in survival, but... Uh, the base I'm going to build is going to work perfectly in survival. However, it just takes so long to build it in survival because I would have to dig all this out from scratch and everything, which is such a pain. So I'm just going to do it in... Oh, that's really interesting how the water is. Okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> it's like we have... Oh, shoot. What on earth is... What the... <laughs> okay, so this is not what I wanted to do. Let me... Uh... Okay, so we're back to... Actually, I shifted a little bit here because there was some weird stuff about the water. And I thought, fine, let me just dig out a hole here without using the level tool. And I thought, hey, everything is good. The water is fine, everything. Yeah, until I get up to here. So what seems to be happening? Because water is blocks, of course they are. Um, when I dig everything out, the water literally collapses down here. So where there should be water here... There's no water, it's like a sinkhole. And yeah, the, the the water collapses down into the hole. The aim is basically to have in a body of water, just have make a hole. Make a hole. The reason is that zombies are gonna be spawning out here. What that's a wandering horde, it could be screamo horde, or it could be the blood mood horde. They will then be swimming out here, and they actually swim fairly fast, actually, much faster than the player. And when they get here, they will literally fall down into it, right? That's what I want. So what I'm going to do, I'm also going to address all these up, all the, on the sides uh, with uh, reinforced concrete here. So let me get that done. Done. I have now fixed what I have as a nice little shaft go to going down here. Now I'm, I'm going to take out some of these blocks here. This is just uh, temporarily. What I'm going to be doing is that, let's say from... Probably from like here, so let's say they're coming from that side. Uh, I'm gonna do like so, taking out um, a little bit of block here because I'm gonna be putting blade traps later on. Uh, like this, like this, like this, like this, All right? You probably get the idea. Um, and now we're down here at the bottom. So we're about 20 down or something. And you can definitely do this in survival. It is just more trouble. 
it, it is a bit of a pain to do when you are doing a survival. If you have the oxygen so you can actually hold your breath longer, it becomes easier. I would suggest doing it from the bottom and up because that means that you only have water once you breach the surface. So, you know, dig a tunnel down somewhere and then uh, do everything all the way up. And as uh, before you hit the, uh, well, once you start hitting the clay, uh, clay, uh, clay, clay, clay layer, then you just uh, finish everything below and then you basically remove the clay and uh, well, because everything is done, you don't have to worry about it. So now I'm done all the way down here. And so we're going to be having something like this because we're going to have dart traps behind. And we're probably going to be having, what else can we have? Electric fences. So let's get some electric fences here. And we're going to do dart traps. And we're probably going to have some trigger plates too. And you could be using... Let's do that. Uh, you could be using, obviously, anything else. Let's do... Hold on. Oh, not enough space. Let's hold on a little bit. I, I need to make a corridor this way, either way. But something like this, you can see how it looks. And I have... Oh, like, like that. And then behind here you have dart traps. Come on, put it. Hey, don't put it there. Put it there now. Yes. And then you have, let's say, something like this. And you have electric fences. So the aim is basically to um, you as soon as something comes down here and walks along. Trip bars might actually be better. Actually, come to think of it, uh, they might be floating over that one. Maybe we should do trip wires. Because if they're floating over, I don't really know how the floating things work. Um, hmm. Because they'll be swimming here. And if they swim a little bit up, then they'll miss all the trip bars. So we probably don't want to do that. And instead, we am I going to do actually something slightly different that I normally don't do. We're going to put the not not use that. Let's use some of these ones. We're going to put the trip wires one higher. That will mean that as soon as they are in this uh, on this line, they should be triggering things. So we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And something like this probably would work. Let's do that. We're going to have electric. Actually, come to think of it, we probably should have the electric fence this height as well. Actually, it might not matter. It might not matter. I am assuming that they'll still... I don't think they can float by it, so let's try it this way. Um, it looks a little bit neater when it's at the bottom, but something like this. And then we're gonna have something like so. so we're gonna open up a little bit, because they'll be coming here, and they'll be taking damage, which is what we want. And then we want them to go into a side corridor here. And if you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy my my base rolls, if you want to leave a like on the video, maybe consider subscribing. That you know that really helps out and makes sure that you don't miss out any in the future. So now there are the zombies are come here. They keep getting hit by the darts, which is another reason why we're going to even more traps. Now you don't have to overdo this if you have a very low concurrent. A zombie count but I'm gonna put this in so that I can later on I might not actually complete this entirely I might not put anything behind it I just want to make it sort of that it's able to handle it something like this but I can put dart traps behind if I want to like so and we're gonna do like this this looks all right uh, here we're probably just for now going to do something like this. Now the aim is that uh, the zombies will be taking a lot of damage here. And they uh, hopefully also take a lot of damage. Will they even make it there? 
It probably will. Right, let's do this. So we will be putting in stuff here, I've decided. You know, on careful consideration, we do need uh, dart traps here. And which means that we need to have some more stuff here. I'm going to hook it up in a little bit. So don't worry. Now they will be running here. Now once they get out here, they, they will be running. They're not going to be swimming anymore because there's only water here. They're going to have this there. Gonna have this there and this there. Let's see how that looks. Right. And then we can do... We can do probably a door. Let's do... um. Normal door, a metal door. If I was a metal door, let's do that. Like this. And then we can have... Do I have a pole? Of course I don't have a pole, but let's get a... Concrete pole. We're going to do the re reinforced concrete pole, but it's not going to be the centered one. We don't want to have the centered one. We're going to have this one. The like that and like that if you get annoyed by some of this water then you basically just put hay bales that's a really good way of cleaning up water <laughs> i'm a bit bent today let's do a feral stripper okay so now ah yes they they know where we are Let's see what they do. And if they start to dig down, this whole thing is a total waste and uh, I will go hang myself. No, no, they're coming like they should. Why are they digging there? Okay, now they... Oh! Oh, is it because it's air? Oh. Oh, okay, she fell down. Okay. Yes. Okay, it worked. Yay. This will sort of work. Okay, let's let's get unstuck here. So sort of work. Actually, that's really really peculiar. It's like loop. Why can't I shoot? You can't shoot on the ground? No. Are you... Are you kidding me? I guess so. I wonder if there's an issue here with the fact that... This is water. Uh, this is air. And this is water. So they don't quite fall in. That's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Uh, I can... Maybe by using booby blocks. And we'll have to see whether we have to do something with that to lure them in. Because she did come down eventually. Even though it's not quite what I wanted. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm going to... Let me just uh, tidy up just a little bit. So I can actually hook everything up. Okay, so now we have our uh, nice little uh, generator room here. I've sort of tidied up this whole area. This is how it looks. So let's uh, look at uh, hooking things up. So the first thing I'm going to do... Upper. I'm going to connect the generator to a switch here and this switch are going to go over to this place and this one is then going to feed this upper lay trap. So I'm just have to connect them all so that they all will be spinning. Let's see all these ones are right. Yes, yeah, so all these are spinning. All right. So all I need to do is do the same thing for the rest of them. Uh, just connecting them all. Now the lower one is uh, pretty much the same. It's connected to the lower. I'm going to have a switch here because that makes it a little bit easier. So the way to do it is that we're going to connect that over to tripwire on this side. Uh, actually, let's do a tripwire on the other side because we want to bring it back. Let's do that. Tripwire to this side. Left side. This one goes all the way across. And this way you run into a bit of an issue with uh, the length if it's too long. And if you put in things uh, before, it's a little bit easier to connect the trip wires actually before you put in the all the dart traps because they block so much. You need to have a little bit of line of sight here. All right, so now you have the trip wire. 
We're going to go tripwire to the fence. And the fence is going to go across to... Oh crap, see now this one isn't there as well. well so you might want to, like I said, do everything except the dart traps. You can actually connect things up. Let's see, I have that one. And there we go. Like this. And now we're going to put back the dart traps. And normally, of course, if you're doing this in survival, you'd be picking them up. Don't destroy them. So now, yes, I, as I showed, we have power goes to tripwire. Tripwire goes across the tripwire. Tripwire goes to electric fence, the meaning that if the tripwire is tripped, meaning someone walks here, the electric fence gets activated and that one is going over to the other side. Now we also need to connect the dart traps. So what we do is we take it from the receiving tripwire, meaning tripwire B, go to that one and that one would just go straight up. And from this one, we can also just bring it straight over and from that one straight up. What this means is that something hits this the electric fence will bust them and the darts will actually start firing. You might be wondering, hey, isn't that a bit dangerous? Yes, it's a bit dangerous. So what we're going to do here, like this. The nice thing about using arrow slip is it will uh, it will protect from, from explosions, for instance. And you can still access it through. Uh, you need to do the same thing here. So you need to have an access path or something to get in. You could do that here, for instance. Um, depending on how you want to do it. You could do it from inside this room. I would try not to. I would probably say the better way of doing it is to giving yourself a path in something like this. And then you put put a doorway or something here. Now, same thing for here. You do need an access and you could go behind here if you wanted to. You could have a door just straight here. Um, and you could put in, for instance, more dart traps here in the in the middle uh, just that that just makes a little bit of a pain to connect everything because you have to connect it on the outside it's painful it's just painful so that's why i'm doing something like this this front door i'm a little bit concerned about just having a normal door you could try and see how that goes then you don't have to dig around but it might also cause a lot of problems because uh, Zombies might decide that, hey, you know, there's some explosions here and then they take out the door. You might need a vault, vault hatch. So how do you connect these things? And it's actually the exact same way as here. So we're going to go from, uh, let's see, where's the upper? From this. This is going to go to the, say here, the this one, which is the tripwire. The tripwire is going to go across and we're going to make sure we don't make this red. Can I? Yes, I can still connect. Ah, there you see. Tripwire. Tripwire goes to electric fence. And the electric fence goes across and back to the other electric fence. Again, make sure you don't go red. See, now I'm red. I can't. And because it's so cramped, I can't actually access it. So I have to go back. This is a little bit too, a little bit too close to see, uh, but if I do that, see now basically trip wire would trip the electric fence, and then you put back the dark traps. No, yes, this way and this way. And remember, when you're doing this, it's the receiving trip wire that has to go to the dart trap. So receiving. Trip bar post goes to the dart trap. This one goes up. And this one we're just going to bring across. And this one we're going to bring up. And here we are. The underwater shredder is done. And it can barely be seen from shore. Except for where there's no water that looks really, really weird and would actually make everyone come and investigate and wonder what the F is coming is going on here. So uh, they will fall down here, swim down, fall down, whatever they do. Uh, how efficiently? We'll see. I'm going to run a Blood Wound Horde really, really soon. Come down here. I'm going to be running all these shredders which will uh, take care of some of them. As they come down here, they will start to trigger the these and they will then be hit by dart traps and electric fences. And when they come out here, which is more of a regular kind of a kill corridor, they will then get hit by the dart traps and the electric fences as well. Now, this one is unlikely to be used that much. 
if I was going to redo this, I probably would have put two on this side here and the door on this side uh, because most of them are going to be gravitating towards here. So which means that they might never end up here. And if I put it here, at least that would have been more used. But anyway, it is what it is. It means that these ones are going to be the most of it. But, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll take a lot of damage. And if not, then they'll end up here. And I can bash them in the face. Or I can simply just shoot them. Because I have, obviously, weapons. You should always be having weapons. We'll see how that goes. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to run a, a Blood Moon Horde. A pretty normal one is going to be... Let's see... Game stage is pretty high, uh, but it's going to be only 16 concurrent and everything, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So let me get that started. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.